my name is Kylie Wong, and I will be presenting on the impact of improper soil management on global health. To introduce myself, I'm a rising junior at Dublin High School in California. At school, I am the secretary and treasurer of the Science Olympiad team and the founder and president of an ASL club. I conduct agronomy research at the Aspiring Scholars Directed Research Program to replicate and genetically modify plants. I also tutor SAT bootcamp sessions and intern at the Tri Valley Plastic Surgery Center. As a member of the Dublin Marriage Council for two years, I've delivered groceries to senior citizens and registered voters. In the future, I intend to pursue medical biotechnology, which aims to create new therapies and diagnostic tools. Healthy soil is critical, considering that it grows 95% of our food. However, a third of the soil is degraded, no longer producing high quality crops. When soil's capacity to support plants and animals is diminished, it becomes unsustainable for the millions of organisms living within it. This issue is further worsened because of the soil's longer generation time, which is 1,000 years for every centimeter. The soil food web is a source of complex interactions between organic matter and a living biome, which consists of macrofauna like moles, spiders, and earthworms. At a smaller level, microorganisms, including bacteria, amoeba, and fungi, also serve their roles individually and in connection with others. As pictured on the right, this network is not linear, but interconnected. When balanced, this created a thriving ecosystem where organisms supplied plant nutrients long before the era of fertilizers. Soil has numerous benefits, not limited to just providing food. It supports the plant's roots, allowing them to uptake water in all conditions. At the same time, its minerals and microbes ensure that pollutants are filtered out of the water. In terms of research, scientists have modeled various medicines after soil-based bacteria, such as the antibiotic rifampin. This drug is highly effective in treating tuberculosis. Lastly, soil is the largest carbon sink after the ocean and regulates atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. Although soil degradation can occur naturally over time, human activities play a primary role in accelerating and causing this deterioration. For example, intensive farming, deforestation, overgrazing, and construction disrupt this intricate ecosystem. As a result, there have been global incidences of erosion, loss of fertility and organic matter, and disturbance of water and nutrient cycles. These issues circulate globally and lead to declines in biodiversity. They manifest into environmental crises, explaining floods, desertification, and decreased food production. Furthermore, widespread urbanization reduces soil permeability, causing runoff and loss of microorganisms. One of soil degradation's most concerning impacts is food insecurity. Poor soil management leads to decreased productivity, lowering crop yields with every passing season. Various regions depend on these harvests for nourishment and without direct access or availability to food, their citizens suffer. Since agricultural productivity has decreased, there's a higher demand for crops and consequently inflated food prices. In many communities, there is an economic barrier between the impoverished and those who can comfortably afford food. This increased cost will only make it more difficult for vulnerable populations to afford healthy diets. Soil mismanagement also presents inadequacies in essential vitamins and minerals, which the body uses for cell division and bone growth. With the decreased nutrient content in crops, children's health will be put at greater risk than before, and their early development may be impacted. Soil mismanagement pollutes the environment, affecting both the water and air. Excessive amounts of fertilizer can leak chemicals into sources of groundwater. When humans drink contaminated water, it can have adverse effects and pose severe dangers to their health. The impact of poor drinking water quality also extends to aquatic ecosystems. When waste is improperly disposed of or poor agricultural practices are used, this negligence can lead to respiratory issues. Regions that are exposed to these pollutants, which are inhaled from the air, can face possible lung problems. On a worldwide scale, soil degradation releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and exacerbates global warming. The climate change resulting from this contributes to heat-related illnesses and environmental shifts where diseases are endemic. Malaria, for instance, could reach the United States because its new conditions are favorable for mosquitoes. 
Some of the most immediate effects are in terms of public health, when biodiversity is lost at the expense of ecosystems. Essential interactions between soil organisms and plants are disrupted. This loss impacts natural processes like pollination, pest control, and nutrient cycling, all of which are key components of sustainable agriculture. Unhealthy soil can create new breeding grounds for disease vectors because environments become conducive to agents like rats or mosquitoes. When they transmit diseases, human populations living near contaminated soil may develop life-threatening symptoms or lower life expectancies. Another risk comes from ingesting or being exposed to toxic substances. When these substances enter a body system, various health issues may occur from gastrointestinal to cardiovascular diseases. Therefore, we should take even more thorough actions to protect public health. Any person can follow these recommendations and help improve our soil quality. First, we should share knowledge among stakeholders like farmers, researchers, policymakers, and agricultural services. This knowledge can include effective practices or research findings so we can foster public engagement. Consumers need to be aware of the significance of soil health for food security and sustainability to make informed choices. Once enough of the public realizes their stake in the issue, we should move towards international cooperation and initiatives. By collaborating across borders, countries can leverage expertise and resources to address soil mismanagement challenges worldwide. The final step is developing solutions that adjust to regional and local contexts, depending on their unique circumstances. Governments can also take further action to improve soil management. By encouraging routine soil testing and monitoring, farmers can easily assess nutrient levels. This enables them to make informed decisions about soil amendments. Investing in research and development can help us explore innovative solutions, including sustainable farming practices and technologies for soil health improvement. Farmers would also benefit from free training programs and workshops that educate them about sustainable soil management practices, conservation techniques, and the importance of long-term productivity. Besides this, farmers could receive financial incentives, subsidies, and grants for adopting new strategies and employing measures to properly manage soil. They would also participate in the soil testing and monitoring programs mentioned earlier. Investing in initiatives would also lead to the rehabilitation of degraded soils through reforestation and land reclamation to restore soil fertility and structure. Finally, fertilizer and pesticides should be applied reasonably according to their recommended dosages. These are the references I use for information and images. Not only am I extremely grateful to the organizers of the Global Health Leaders Conference for this incredible opportunity, but I would also like to thank any listeners. Thank you for spending the time to learn more about this topic. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to kyliewong777 at gmail.com via email. Hmm.